All right, have and have not fans. Now, it seems like I'm recording a string of disappointment videos, and I really don't want the channel to come to this, but uh, I'm just sharing my thoughts because a lot of people are... I've been reading the comments. Uh, over 30 comments on my episode review for... Um, Fine together the episode of the haves and the have nots we got this week and there are like 24 F, uh, comments on the someone special trailer breakdown and a lot of people are pretty much chiming in on my thoughts and a lot of them feel the same way so before going further make sure you give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button click the bell icon and select all that way you're notified when I post new content and follow me on social media links are going to be in the description below I've said it in every review so far, it seems like the main cast has been pushed to the background for like the secondary characters and new characters to come forward and kind of take the reins and um, carry the story forward for the most part. But Veronica's just been a waste this season so far. And well, at least in these last three episodes, arguably the first 10 when you really think about it, she's just been reminiscing on almost drowning and wanting sex and then that's it but a lot of people uh, were saying the same thing about oh, actually let me pull up this one comment because of the fact that it really drove home what I felt about um, her character I mean if nothing else she's just been like the the comic relief if nothing else, uh, Mr. Bear Facts, uh, Veronica's insulting comedy lines are overdone and getting lamer each episode. Is she supposed to be like Cookie from the show Empire? Uh, it goes back to like, I think one of the worst times was, uh, and I believe this was in one of the first 10 episodes here. I forgot the exact episode. I know it's when she went to David's house with the megaphone. And she just started ranting about how this is a cheating bastard who loves whores and prostitutes and you know my my daughter likes men and everything and she went on like this homophobic rant and people weren't there for it like not even those who um are are, are not homosexual but just straight or just people in general they didn't like it and i could see why that's some hurtful dialogue there and the fact that it's not even good remember when these characters had like snarky remarks and monologues that were legendary like the i am veronica or number nine like those speeches like that those were monumental in the uh, early episodes of the haves and the have nots like again i tell everybody go back and watch season one like the first 34 episodes yeah that's season one on hulu like watch the first five episodes and i challenge you those first five episodes hell of a lot better than like the past couple seasons of the show we've gotten so far but it's like i get it it's set up and I know people are like, I think some people are messing me like, well, you know what, Jeremy, it's okay if the show's moving slow because it's building up for something. I know I'm used to it now, but I remember the, and I hate, I know it's like, well, not everything could stay the same, but I remember the good old days where you had to watch every episode, where you had to hang on every character's word because every person's bit of dialogue, snarky or not, there was some foreshadowing involved. There was something meaningful in their dialogue. There was some growth. There was development. There was interesting character interactions. There were characters who you couldn't wait to meet face to face on screen because you felt like their encounter would eventually become something, uh, you know, exciting for the plot. Now it's just kind of dry because we've been seeing the characters do the same thing for a long time. I mean, how many times are we going to see Wyatt attempt to get high and then get in some trouble? How many times is Hannah going to tell these kids to give the money back instead of making them pay for their crimes? How many times are we going to see, um, you know, Jeffrey get involved with the whole Justin bull crap, which I still say is like, that's the only reason he's going over to Madison's house. I get, he's, un I understand him being worried, but let's be real. He's only going over there to incite drama. Madison can handle himself, but in terms of Jeffrey going over there, he just knows that's going to incite more drama. That's it. Now, in any case, with Veronica, I feel like she's definitely wasted. Like, you know, her jokes aren't laying. I mean, the pin thing was actually funny. R R Riddell, the dude that uh, was in the pool, was like, what are you talking about? I already got a pin. I don't need your little uh, tiny one. She, A couple of her zingers do hit home, but for the most part, it just feels like she's wasted. I know Veronica's plotting something, event, you know, with the whole Laura thing, but overall, I don't feel like we're seeing the best of Veronica. We're just seeing this 
sex hundred uh, this this horny cougar who's drunk that's pretty much it so i know we'll see something before the season's over hopefully but for now i just feel like veronica's being wasted as is most of the main cast like candace was just thrown on the stoop like literally remember when tinka Sumner's character was like somebody you love to hate and you watched her but now you just hate to watch because it's boring that's just me but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. You could be like, Jeremy, you tripping, man. Veronica's my favorite part of the show. Seriously, these first three episodes we just got, do you really think Veronica was the best part? To me, the best parts were Mama Rose and Catherine. So if you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal, Cash App, or you can hit me up on Patreon by joining for as little as $1 a month.